Here is the second episode on Dr. Whale, on this holistic doctor, because he is amazing and he has a lot to teach us. We will talk matcha, weed, microdosing and a lot more, so stick around. And by the way, my name is Albert. If you are new here and you want to optimize your health to burn fat, live long and feel incredible, consider subscribing. Alright, number one is to go for matcha from Japan. I think everybody agrees that matcha is the most beneficial type of green tea out there. It has way more alphenine and other antioxidants than regular green tea. But when it comes to matcha, there's a big difference on whether you get it from Japan or from China. At least that's what Dr. Andrew Well tells us. And he would go for Japanese matcha every single day. I don't know about matcha and green tea, but in China they have very depleted soils. And they also have a lot of chemicals around. I know it's a problem if you are getting mushrooms from China. And it probably is with matcha as well. Number two is microdosing. Andrew is a fan of microdosing psychedelics. So taking maybe a fifth or a tenth of a regular dose. Uh, not to have any visuals. Not to have any hallucinations. But to enhance your cognition. To connect your left and right brain and become more creative. Microdosing has many implications and I honestly am not talking from my own experience because I never tried microdosing but from what I've heard it is incredible. And if you are a writer or a businessman or you just have to think about your job effectively then psychedelics will definitely help you in lower doses. Andrew is also a fan of taking mega doses of psychedelics which I think we talked about in the last episode. Number three is to be aware of cannabis. Throughout his life, Andrew experimented a lot with cannabis. And he says that uh, weed is fun, but over time it, it becomes less powerful and it actually makes him groggy now. And obviously, weed also doesn't have the best impact on your cognition in the long run. I have no problem with weed. It is pretty safe as far as your health. And if you are using it to overcome your cigarette addiction or alcohol addiction, that is amazing and I encourage you to keep doing that. With that said, it probably isn't optimal. At least not if you are taking it daily. I am again not talking from my own experience. I smoked maybe <laughs> four times in my life. But this is what Andrew says. Number four is CoQ10. Coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme is a nutrient it can be found in organ meats, but in very low quantities. And to get enough, you will have to supplement with around 100 milligrams per day. Less and less. You don't have to worry about this if you are young. But as we get older, we need more and more coenzyme Q10. That's why after 40, CoQ10 becomes really important for boosting our brain function and preventing neurodegenerative diseases. Number five is don't breathe PUFAS, polyunsaturated fatty acids. I hope that you are not frying on canola oil or corn oil because these are incredibly high in omega-6 and the omega-6 is already rancid. Do not under any circumstances fry on these and tell your family not to fry on these either but if they don't listen, because my family doesn't listen, uh, if your family doesn't listen either, try not to breathe those PUFAs. Because breathing them in will cause you problems. It will do harm in your body. Number six are antioxidants. Antioxidants are a great way to prevent this stress from free radicals and oxidizers. And by oxidizers, I meant oxidants. And it makes sense that antioxidants will help you fight against oxidants. And the more free radicals and oxidants that you will put yourself in front of, the more antioxidants you will need, obviously. So it's a good idea to eat a lot of berries and dark chocolate and those antioxidant-rich foods. Number seven is that Andrew swims in the ocean daily. I love that and there are three main reasons why that, I believe, is very healthy for you. First off, you are getting your exercise in and swimming is really good for your spine and really good overall. Second, oceans tend to be cold. I mean, it definitely depends on where he lives, but he also says that his ocean is cold. And third off, believe it or not, but swimming in an ocean 
is a good source of magnesium. There is a reasonable amount of magnesium in the oceans and it's in the form of magnesium chloride that absorbs very well to your skin. That is actually one of the ways that our ancestors got their magnesium. Number eight is not to take iron. Unless you are deficient, obviously. If you are a young girl who also is on a vegan diet, you will have to supplement with iron. It's almost a necessity. But if you are a man and you eat meat, then there is no reason to take extra iron and it actually will likely cause more harm than good. There is a sweet spot with iron. You obviously don't want to get too little, but you also don't want to get too much because that will cause a lot of problems. And unfortunately, around 25% of the population has a problem with regulating their iron. Most of us will flush the excess out through urine, but with those 25%, their body does not know when to flush the iron out, so it just keeps it. And it just keeps accumulating and accumulating, and over time, you will have so much iron in your body that it will be as harmful as heavy metals. And it will cause you to age really fast. So be aware if you are a man, if you eat a lot of iron, or if you are old. If all three of these apply to you, then you definitely have to get your blood tested, just to make sure. Number nine is that Andrew takes melatonin. He takes around two and a half milligrams per day, and that is because your needs for melatonin go up as you age, because your body does not know how to produce enough. Be aware, however, that melatonin supplements have one side effect, and that is that when you supplement it, your body will understand that it is getting the melatonin exogenously, and it doesn't need to produce as much melatonin on itself. Therefore, your brain will stop producing as much melatonin as it otherwise would. I mean, probably your gut, not your brain. I'm not sure, but you get the point. And number 10 is to keep intellectually active. When you don't put pressure on your muscles, they will not grow and they will actually get smaller as you age. And same for your brain. The more you use your brain, the more it has a reason to function well. And if you just retire and you become sedentary, you start watching TV and you don't think about anything, then you will quickly run into problems. This is probably the main reason why people who retire don't live as long as those who don't. And these are the 10 tips from Andrew Whale. I personally love them and I would like to know what you think of them in the comments. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.